All right. So here we go. Number one, one plus tangent squared. You're supposed to already have that one memorized. What? One plus tangent squared is secant squared. That's a biggie. You need to have that memorized. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Um, let's skip down to the fourth one. We should have that one too. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. Anybody remember from the video what I called that? That one's important. I mean, they're all important, but that was really important. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one is called the fundamental trigonometric identity. That is the big one. Cosine over sine, cotangent. Now, I don't know if you're listening or not, but someone in the room has these memorized just like this. That's where you all need to be. It's not that hard. Let's skip down to the one that says tangent equals and has all those boxes. What does tangent equal? There are a couple different ways to describe tangent. Sine, sine, sine over, cosine. over cosine. That's probably the big one, sine over cosine. How else? One over tangent. Or cotangent, excuse me, one over cotangent. Tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. What does sine equal? Sine equals one over one over cosecant. The reciprocal identities, guys, the one overs are the reciprocals. What are the reciprocal functions? Sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So sine is one over cosecant. What is secant? One over cosine. One over cosine. Now, let's go back and look at the ones we didn't do. There are two basic families. There are the formula, or the identities that deal with, they're called the complementary, um, the co-functions, the complementary. Co is complementary. CO stands for complementary. As we were learning our six functions, did you notice that we had sine and cosine? We had tan and cotan, and we had secant and cosecant. Did you notice that? that that's the co-function relationship. And the word co comes directly from complementary. Who remembers from geometry what complementary means? Angles that are complementary. Close, it's the other one. They equal 90. Supplementary is the 180. Complementary means they add up to 90. Okay? So if you see a 90 in the problem, like look at the third one down. It says sine 90 minus x. When you see the 90, that is your clue that it is a co-function. What is the co-function for sine? Cosine. So that would be cosine x. So the sine of 90 minus an angle equals the cosine of the complement of that angle, or x. Anytime you see a 90, you're going to use the, co the co-function, not the reciprocal. Reciprocal is 1 over. 90 is the co-function. So let's go down, look at cotangent 90 minus x. I should have numbered these. The cotangent of 90 minus x will be tan x. Anytime you see the 90, you think co-function. So sine, cosine, tan, cotan. All right, there are no more of those. Okay, the other, the only two left that should be filled in are the tan negative x and cosecant negative x. Are those the only two left? Okay, now these are the negatives. How do we handle the tangent of a negative, the sine of a negative? As it turns out, for all of the functions, tangent, cotangent, 
cosecant sine, cosine, and secant. For all of the functions except these, the negative comes out. So in other words, cotangent negative x is negative cotangent x. Tangent negative x is negative tangent x. Cosecant is negative cosecant x and sine is negative sine x. That's how everything is handled except these two. So when you have a function and a negative x, you pull the negative out unless it's a cosine or a secant. If it's a cosine or a secant, you drop it. So it's just cosine x and secant x. Way back a long time ago, we talked about even and odd functions. These are all odd functions, so the negative comes out. These are even functions, so the negative just disappears. So when I look at the second problem on this page, tan negative x is going to be negative tan x. Cosecant negative x is going to be negative cosecant x. All right, let's do the back of that. We're not going to do this whole packet right now. But let's do the back. Let's just go right down in order. Now we've talked about everything, so let's see if we can fill everything in. So let's stay up with us. Everybody on the back side? Here we go. Sine squared plus... Oh my goodness. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. What is tangent equal? Sine over cosine is one of them. One over cotangent. One over cotangent. Reciprocal, reciprocal, reciprocal. Cosecant equals one over sine. Very good. You should know that already just from the work that we've done. Here's one of our negatives. Tan negative x equals negative tan x. The negative always comes out unless it's a cosine or a secant. Cosine x. Now we have a 90, so this is a co-function. What is the co-function for cosine? Sine x. Very good. One plus what is secant squared? Sine. Cosine. Tangent squared. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Sine equals? Now this is a reciprocal, it's one over cosecant. Sine is the reciprocal of the cosecant. We sometimes get our co-functions mixed up with our reciprocals. Reciprocals are one over, co-functions have the 90 in it. Uh, speaking of which, tangent 90 minus x, cotangent x. The co-function, cotangent x. 1 plus cotangent squared. Cosecant squared. Okay, we got an identity that says 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. See how similar they are? Those of you that go on to take calculus, you're going to use these all the time. These show up all the time. All right. And last one, cotangent. What's cotangent? Two expressions. Cosine over sine and one over tan. Very good. Very good. All right, that's all of that. We're going to move now. We will have a bigger memorization quiz 
not the next time we meet, but the time after that. So if you bombed this one because you spent, what, four, five, six days doing zero, you need to get caught up. All right? We're going to have a quiz, and not next time, but the time after that. It will be bigger. All right, now let's get back to our notes. And we are ready for number 15. And these directions, by the way, say simplify. So we have this kind of ugly thing here, and we are to simplify it. Using the things that we have memorized, plus our regular arithmetic tools. Okay, this is problem 15 on page 40. For those of you that haven't done the e-learning, you need to go there to get 1 to 14. Not going to go back and redo them. All right, so 15. Hmm, I see two different ways to start this problem. Does anybody see something to do? Yeah, so one way, Olivia says, one way to approach this is to notice that we have a GCF, we have a greatest common factor. We could pull a sine squared out, correct? And if we did pull a sine squared out, what would we have left? Cosecant squared minus one. Now, this is where bells need to go off, ding, 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 lights are flashing, because this is something. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something. I have an identity that I have memorized that says one plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Now, what made me think of that? I saw a one and a cosecant squared. I knew those were connected somehow. So I dig back in my memory bank of identities and this is in there, right? Right? Mm -hmm. There are whole books written about trigonometric identities. We have condensed this down. You have very few you have to memorize, but you need to memorize this. Otherwise, it won't occur to you that, oh, that's something special. Now, this says cosecant squared minus one. So if I took this equation and subtracted one, it would say this. Would you agree with that? So cosecant squared minus one is really just the same as cotangent squared. So sine squared times cotangent squared. because this is just the same as cotangent squared. Now tell me about cotangent. What's cotangent? What are some definitions of cotangent? Okay, it's one over tangent. What's another one? Cosine over sine. So what if I thought about this like this? Cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Now, I know you memorized it's cosine over sine. That's true. But if it's squared, it's cosine squared over sine squared. So I've got my sine squared, which I put over 1, times my cosine squared over sine squared. Well, what happens? These cancel. And what are we left with? Yeah, just cosine squared over 1, which is just cosine squared. 
So that big ugly thing, our job was to simplify it and we simplified it down to cosine squared. These are like proofs in geometry. There's lots of ways to approach it. So this is the way Olivia wanted to start. She wanted to start by factoring. It worked out great. Let's look at the original problem. Does anybody have another thought? What's the relationship between these two? So. And they're not complementary. They are reciprocals, aren't they? Aren't they reciprocal? So another way to have approached this problem, you don't have to do it both ways. You do it however it occurs to you. But another way would be to say, all right, I've got sine squared times one over sine squared. And what happens here? When you multiply these two together, because they're reciprocals, what happens to them? Yeah, don't they make one? So now I'm left with one minus sine squared. Ding, 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 lights are going off, things are flashing, because I know there's something special about a one and a sine squared. I have an identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is one. I have that memorized. So when I see a one combined with a sine squared, I know there's something. If I subtracted the sine squared, this would say cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. So what is one minus sine squared equal? Cosine squared. Notice I ended up with exactly the same answer. I just did it differently. No matter how you do it though, you've got to be making the connections between these functions. You've got to see, oh, I don't know what that is, but it's something special. I don't know what this is, but it's something special. And then you figure it out using your identities. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. What do you think about this one? How do you think you might start it? Foil, what a great idea. Nothing tricky about that. We're going to FOIL. So we have sine plus cosine quantity squared. So we know what that means. That means sine plus cosine times sine plus cosine. So here we go. We're going to FOIL. First times first gives me what? Sine squared. Outsides give me sine times cosine. They don't cancel out. They're not reciprocals of each other. They just say sine times cosine. Insides give me the same thing, sine times cosine. And what is last give me? Cosine squared. Hmm, that's kind of big and ugly. Do you notice anything? It's cosine is No, Oh, I don't think these cancel, do they? They add though. So it would be two sine x cosine x. Yep, they add together. They're like terms. Bing, 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 light bulbs going off, fireworks. What's sine squared plus cosine squared? One. These two just add together and make a one. And we're done. There's nothing else to do. in terms of simplifying. I do 
this. Gonna multiply. Throw it out again. Okay, so foiling would give me cotangent squared. Is one of those a plus and one a minus? Yeah. Yeah. So cotangent squared, okay. So plus cotangent cosecant. That's outside. And then inside is minus cosecant cotangent. And then minus cosecant squared. How does that look? Does that foiling make sense to everyone? Now, do you notice anything at all? The middle ones cancel, right? Yep. This time they do cancel. So we've got cotangent squared minus cosecant squared. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My heart is beating faster. There is a relationship between cosecant squared and cotangent squared. What is that identity that we have memorized? One plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So if I subtracted cotangent squared, I get one equal to cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Now is that exactly what I have here? I have the backwards of that, don't I? Yeah. So if cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is one, it, if I subtract in the other order, it would be yeah. negative one. So the answer to that is negative one. I get it. You want us to like memorize like the formulas for like the, the squared x, but why can't you just put like the cotangent and like the cosecant like all under one, so that way it would just be one of like one over cotangent and then like one over like sine. So that way. Okay, so let's talk about what Max just said. Max said, how about, Mrs. Ford, at this point right here, instead of doing what I did, what if I rewrote cotangent squared? Now, cotangent squared would be cosine squared over sine squared, right? Minus one over sine squared. That can actually, they have a common denominator, so it can actually be written like this. Now, bells are going off in my head because I have an identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So what's cosine squared minus one? Well, if I subtracted sine squared, and subtracted one, I'd have cosine squared minus one equal to negative sine squared. So that's negative sine squared. And what is negative sine squared over positive sine squared? Negative one. Same answer. Yeah. Now, Max, I don't necessarily think that's easier than what I did, but if it's easier for you, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. It will work every time. Okay. okay. All right, now that is it for the notes. So get that other practice sheet. That's it for the notes in that section. We need to uh, do that extra practice, 5.1. <laughs> and like everything else, you only get good at this by trying it yourself. So there's not enough room on the paper, obviously. So get out a sheet of paper and see how far you can get with number one. Work with your partner if you need to or want to.
Let's see how far you can get with problem number one. You are simplifying this. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. That is exactly right, Mr. Schleubecker. Now, for the rest of you, he said there's something special about cosine squared. I don't know exactly what it is, but I got this identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if I subtract sine squared, then cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. So I could replace this with one minus sine squared. Now, some of you are thinking, why in the world would I want to do that? Well, when I have a fraction, the only way to simplify a fraction is to cancel things out and the only way to, for them to cancel is if they're the same. So obviously cosines are not going to cancel with sines, but sines can cancel with sines, right? Now, not yet. I got to do something. There's one more step. Do you know what it is, Thomas? Nope. He knows there's more to it. He can't remember what that might be. Anybody remember how to handle something like this? How do we factor something like 1 minus x squared? <laughs> the difference of squares. So 1 minus x, 1 plus x. This is the same thing. 1 minus sine, 1 plus sine. Difference of squares. Remember, a squared minus b squared is a minus b, a plus b. Every time you have two squares subtracted, you can factor in that way. So we have one minus regular sine, one plus regular sine over sine plus one. Don't these cancel? Aren't they the same thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the answer to the question is? One minus sine. Very good, Mr. Schleybecker, for making that observation. First thing he did was change cosine squared into one minus sine squared. And then he factored that and canceled, and we are done. Very nicely done. All right, let's look at the next one. Take a minute, see how far you can get with this one. This one now, no, the What happened to you? Uh, where did I go? I just gave it to you. doing this on separate paper because most of these we don't have on the, on the paper itself to do. So number two, cotangent times sine. I'm actually lost. 
got this one? Mm -hmm. Easy. <laughs> yeah, this one's easy. This yeah. one's much easier. What's cotangent? Well, it's one over tangent. What else is it? Cosine over, over sine. sine. So what if we wrote this as cosine over sine times sine over one? Wait, what? Oh yeah. Oh. So the answer is just cosine. Now, when I said what's cotangent, someone said one over tangent. Now, is that incorrect? No, that is absolutely right. But it doesn't help me out very much, does it? Because this problem had a sign already in it, it was better to think of it as cosine over sine than it was one over tangent. Even though you, were, you weren't wrong to say one over tangent. It just didn't get you anywhere. All right, take a look at the next one. You ought to be able to at least think about a plan for the next one. Even if you can't execute it, you ought to see something going on there. Can we do the same thing we did in the first one? Somebody said bing, 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 bing. Yes. You should be hearing bings and seeing lights flashing. Secret squared minus one. All right, I don't know what that is, but I have memorized that 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. If I were to subtract 1 from both sides, wouldn't I have secant squared minus 1? And what does that equal? Tangent squared. This says tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. So this is tangent squared. Come on, we got tangent squared over tangent. What happens? One of the tangents cancels and leaves me with one extra. So the answer is just tangent. Not squared. Nope, not, squared. not squared. The squared cancels. This is tangent squared is tangent times tangent. So when you put that over tangent, you're left with just one tangent. Olivia? Where do these x's come from? Like, what's the point of the x's next to the tangent? Remember, these are trigonometric functions. So in order to have a tangent, you have to have the tangent of an angle. So it's like the tangent of 60, only we're doing it in general. So actually, no. We've already done the numbers part. Now we're doing things in general. We're not going to go as far as full-blown proofs. But remember how you prove things in geometry? You prove things in trigonometry, too, using this sort of thing. We're not going to go that far. We're just simplifying it. All right, everybody okay with that? All right, let's look at number four. What a mess. So we have cosecant, cosine, and tangent. And to Olivia's point, she said, what are the X's? And they've got to be there. You can't just write T-A-N. T-A-N makes no sense. If you press T-A-N on your calculator and you don't give it an angle, it won't work. So we're using X's here. You could use N's or A's or any letter you wanted, but you got to have that in there. All right, so here we go. Anybody have an idea? We could do fractions. Oh, we could do fractions because cosecant is what? It's a One reciprocal over function. Sine. One over sine. sine. Now, cosine, leave it. Cosine over 1. We don't normally rewrite sines and cosines. We, those are the base units, so we usually just break them, everything else down. So what's tangent? Cosine over sine. Uh, sine, sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Exactly. 
This is a straight multiply problem. This is a straight multiplication. So see this cosine, it'll cancel with that one, right? And that sine will cancel with that one? So the answer is one. Very good, very good. Well, sure. I mean, you could have a number in the problem. Now, let's see it on this page. Oh, yeah. See, like in 23, there's a 3 in there. You can have, you can have numbers in the answer. All right, here we go. Tangent squared over secant minus 1. Now, think. Think it minus 1. Tangent squared, you're getting it. Tangent squared can be rewritten as secants, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I got to remember what that is. I'm going to rewrite it again. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. That's all by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 1. So tangent squared can be replaced with secant squared minus 1. Don't cancel at this point. We can't cancel because of these minuses. The only way you can cancel is if you can factor. Break it up. Actually, great question, Caroline, but no. All of those identities, the ones that your book referred to as the Pythagorean identities, they're all squared. They're all squared. The only replacements that you can do here is if they're squared, okay? Kids try that all, or all kinds of people try it all the time, no. Um, that's why I like the fact your book calls them Pythagorean identities because that reminds me they're squared. X A squared plus B squared plus C squared. No. However, this does factor. We've already talked about it this morning. This is the difference of squares. So it's secant minus one, secant plus one. You gotta go back to first year algebra and remember how to factor squares. First plus last, first minus last. Here we go. Now, what happens? They cancel, and the answer is secant x plus one. The more we do, the more we talk about them, the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't have your stuff memorized, you are dead in the water. You have got to memorize the basics. All right, what am I ready for? Six? Oh, really? Take 30 seconds, get this one done for me. I know you can do it. Everybody in the room can do this one. I need more I know you can. Nope, you can get it done in 30 seconds. What? Oh. Dang, dang, dang. What's tangent? Sine over cosine. It's sine over cosine. Cosine over one. And what happens when we multiply sine over cosine times cosine? We get sine x. That's it. Almost always, kids, I said this before, Magnus, I said this before, almost always, you want to leave your sines and cosines, rewrite everything else. So we'll rewrite tangent, but leave your cosine. Don't write it as one over secant or something. All right, number seven. This one might take you a minute, but you can do this one too. Got it. Right, put it up on the board for sine. Did you say sine? Yes. You're right. Yeah. You're right. This one also reduces to sine. Now it's a different, it's a different situation. But look at that numerator. Doesn't something click in your brain when you see that? And you don't know what it is, but you know it's special. 
because sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So if that's true, let's subtract cosine squared. One minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared. So my numerator is sine squared. One of the signs is going to cancel and leave us with sine x. Secant cotangent sine squared. All right. What do you think we ought to do here? Cotangent. Secant is not cotangent. No, no, I mean like the cotangent. <laughs> you go cosine x over sine x. Oh, okay. So this one yeah, yeah. could yeah. be cosine <laughs> over sine. Good. What about secant? One over cosine, yep. Secant's one over cosine. Cotangent. Now that's a sine, so don't change it, just leave it alone. Cosine. Anything happen? Cosine's cancel. Cosine's cancel. One of the signs cancels, so this one breaks down to just sine also. Hmm. Are your brains worn out yet? Yeah. All right, number yeah, nine. Give it a shot all by yourself. Number nine. Doing? Where did you start? Oh, I'm looking at the yeah. So sine over cosine, cosine over sine. Yep, and they cancel already. Sine over one. One over cosine. Is that right? So we're going to be left with sine over cosine, yeah. which is the same as Did anybody look at the problem right at the beginning and say these are going to cancel? No. How can you yeah. see that? Yeah. How do you see that? Those are reciprocals. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. What happens when you multiply reciprocals? One third times three over one, two thirds times three over two, don't they cancel? So tan and cotan will cancel when they are multiplied. Will sine and cosine cancel? Heck no, they're not reciprocals. Only the reciprocals will cancel. All right, let's do one more here. Number 10. Now, let's talk about that. Olivia, Olivia says, we can factor the numerator. It's the difference of squares. And she is exactly right. But isn't there the equation? Exactly. So Olivia, I want to show you something. If this had been my problem, 
if there had been signs in the bottom, I would do exactly what you said. I would factor that as the difference of squares. But since my denominator, so if this had been the problem, that's what I would do. But my denominator is a cosine. There is no way I'm going to be able to cancel unless I can change that into cosines. So I remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if I subtract sine squared, then 1 minus sine squared is the same as cosine squared. And now we can cancel and it becomes cosine. Now, before we gather up, there we done we did all the problems in the notes and we just did 10 more practice problems. There are basically so far two main strategies. Can anybody tell me how what have we done on every one of these problems? Either what? Fractions. Fractions. So one way is to change everything to fractions. So problems that look like 2, 4, 8, 9, 14, those are going to get changed to fractions. What's the other thing we've done on the other problems? We've rewritten using our Pythagorean identities. So if you try one of those two strategies, you'll probably at least be able to get started. Oh, look over there. Okay, listen, get your stuff memorized because